review from the Financial Service Ombudsman, 40% of complaints made against banks directly related to mortgages, while insurance complaints were up 15%. Joining us now in studio with more detail is personal finance expert Carl Dieter. Carl, good morning to you. Yeah. Now, Carl, let's talk about the rise first of all, because it's a slight <laughs> rise. It's a 5% increase. I would have expected to see a greater rise, actually. Actually, the, the increase is kind of unimpressive because we're measuring against the lowest point in the last three years. Uh, what happened for some reason is that in the last quarter of 2011, complaints really dropped off. Uh, and then they've come kind of back up to where they used to be. So it looks like an increase, but that's only if you look at what came right before. If you kind of look right back down the line, it's just really a steady, a steady line somewhere between 3,600 and, and 3,900 complaints. Now let's talk about what people were complaining about, and again, no surprise, that 40% of complaints made were in some way related to mortgages. Uh, of, of the complaints made about banks, 40% yes, were. Yes, specifically. Uh, and banks, again, had a very level uh, half of the year compared to other times. Uh, they usually get about 1,200 complaints every, every half a year. The thing with uh, mortgages, is specifically because a lot of people had lost trackers, given up trackers. Mm. We've actually represented a lot of people in the past on trackers and gotten them refunds, gotten their tracker back. So it is something that uh, the law was changed at one stage to, to say under the Code of Conduct on Mortgage Arrears that if you're falling behind, the bank can't take away your tracker as part of the negotiation process. So you had a lot of revision of people going back saying, listen, I should have been offered my tracker. Uh, some loan offers had. Uh, fixed rates where when you came off you were meant to go onto a tracker and the person didn't. So there was a lot of sort of small pieces of confusion that were getting ironed out and because trackers are so valuable people were really conscious of the fact that they might have missed out on it. Uh, if we still had trackers they probably wouldn't be uh, as aware of what they were missing out on. It's also because interest rates had been pushed up so high by the banks themselves. Um, and now repayments obviously were a huge cause of concern for an awful lot of people. But we were chatting beforehand <coughs> and you were saying that just because you're unhappy with your financial situation isn't grounds for complaint. But working out when you're just a punter going into the bank, what is genuine grounds for complaint is often a difficult thing to do. So when it comes to repayments, when do you have bona fide grounds to complain in relation to a bank? I suppose we're kind of programmed from when we're young that if you're unhappy with something you should complain or maybe Irish people actually are not huge complainers. We're not generally. good at it Carl, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but the, the, the foundation within people is usually if I'm not happy I complain from a financial perspective and what the FSO will deal with, or sorry financial service ombudsman, is that you've got to be both dissatisfied but have had something go wrong in the process. So you can't invest in something, lose money and say, I'm not happy. You have to prove that you were missold. You have to prove that some aspect of process wasn't done that should have been done, that you weren't dealt with fairly, that you hadn't been treated in, in the correct manner given the complaint that you made. Uh, and this is all covered by things like the Consumer Protection Code, uh, the Consumer Credit Act. There's a lot of legislation behind it. The confusion is that people don't actually know about all this legislation, so they don't know what to go with. And that's why about 90% of complaints are not fully found in the, in the consumer's favor. That's the amazing thing. We actually have a, a tiny little margin of, of financial uh, policies because this covers banks, investment firms, and insurance institutions. Uh, only a tiny number that actually go to complaint, and of that small number, only 10% result in, uh, fully in the consumer's favor. And I think that is that, that because of consumer confusion that we're not well informed enough? I think there is a level of inertia. I think there is also uh, a level of being dissatisfied and saying, I'm going to complain. But a large amount of the complaints aren't even followed up mm. by the complainant, by the person who said that it was wrong. Financial institutions as well are kind of, they're, they're not quick to look for a complaint because once a person complains, it's, it kicks off a whole process that means you've got to get back to them within five days with written responses. It, it, it's very expensive for a firm to deal with a complaint, which is why I've, I've often said to people, if you want to get a, a financial company's attention, you should complain because then it actually starts to give them a large expense. Uh, the end result being, obviously, though, a lot of them are not upheld. And the reason is people don't know what they're complaining about. They don't know... They don't have specific grounds that it's looked into, and it's seen that the company didn't do everything wrong. So as bad as we think financial firms are, most of the time they're not actually found guilty. Well, maybe that's because we just don't have enough information to get them back to rights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. But, but we don't know. It's, uh, it, it is something, though, that I would always say, if you're unsure, 
there's people out there who Seek can advice. advise you, get some advice. Okay. You know, it, Fine, it does cost something, but you know what, if you had a sore throat, you might have to seek the advice of a doctor to know whether it's a bacteria that requires an antibiotic or just a virus. That and there was quite a large amount of money paid out to some cases that were resolved, so it might be worth it in the long run. Absolutely. Carl, Carl thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Carl Dieter there. Now let us know your thoughts on that topic. Have you made a complaint? Was